This is One on One. Play this one note as steady as possible, flawless. And you breathe all the air out of your body into the instrument. It's meditation, and it, it connects you to the universe. Because you're putting your sound right out there into the ethers. And it's going everywhere. It's touching everything. Like, sometimes you'll hear those cicadas stop, or you'll hear them start going while we're going. I mean, our father taught us that it was the long tone, and it makes sense. Because anything that's worth anything lasts long. It's good stuff. That's from the, uh, the film uh, Brothers Hypnotic, and the uh, general who put it together is right here. I want to thank you for joining us for the first time. Uh, Ruben Atlas, how are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me. You're the director of that. Uh, give us some context. It's a story about eight brothers from the south side of Chicago. Right. Uh, their father is a jazz legend. He had 25 children. And, and the, ja the jazz legend, legend uh, we're talking about is? Phil Coran. Phil Coran. Keelan Phil Coran. Right. And he had sort of a space in the secret history of the South Side of Chicago and in the music scene. And almost everybody who was famous that came through Chicago knew him or played with him. Mm -hmm. um, but he raised his sons uh, with, his, with their mothers um, together as a band. But they had different moms. They had different moms, yeah. And so how the heck do you meet these eight brothers from the South Side of Chicago? I happen to know that you're not born and raised in the south side or from the south side of Chicago? Uh, they were playing in Union Square. Um, and I was, I was actually in my third year of law school and sort of just walking, not thrilled about being in law school. Here in New York? Here in New York. And uh, I heard this sound sort of bouncing off buildings and I turned the corner and <laughs> there was the eight of them like bouncing in unison um, and playing this music that was just incredible. Um, and it fused hip hop and jazz and funk and um, blew me away. And you said? I, I sort of waited till after the song was over and I, I went immediately over to sort of the, one of the guys on the end and said, I love this music. I was working um, making advocacy videos at the time when I was in law school for people who were incarcerated under the uh, Rockefeller drug laws. and. I was interested in making Rockefeller Jeff Law was having to do with crack versus cocaine and well mandatory and they're ma mandatory, mandatory minimums. Yeah, got it. Um, and I just said to one of them, I would love to make a video, help you guys get gigs. And they, um, you know, there's not there's a lot of street musicians in New York, a lot of talent, but rarely do you see that much talent and that many people and such a force on the corner. And they sort of looked at me and they said, you know, where are I getting gigs? You know, we, we can get gigs if we want. Um, best way you can support is if you buy a CD. And so I bought a CD, showed up the next day with a camera, and sort of went from there. How long ago was that? Uh, 2007. So it's really? been a while. Yeah, a long journey. Um, because I happen to know your, uh, your dad and your mom, John and Bonnie. Right? Yeah. They started telling me about this a while ago. I'm like, he's doing what? Ruben's doing what? Yeah, yeah. And so while you're, are you living your life separately, doing other things and dabbling in this, or do you say I'm all in? Um, well, when I, I started, when I, you know, I would take breaks during studying for law school classes. And um, there was a moment when they got, an, they got offered a deal uh, from Atlantic Records right when I was studying for the bar. And I had a moment of, you know, I, if I focus on this film, this is a huge moment. You know, I need to be there. Yeah. Um, but something forced me into, you know, taking the bar. Ruben, and what fast. makes, I'm sorry for interrupting, what makes this film special and why should people make sure they see it? Um, I mean, the, the, these brothers and their story um, and their father's story, and they, they've sort of bucked uh, the pressures of convention to create something that's just amazing and beautiful. Um, How'd they grow up? What was it like? I mean, they grew up in south side of Chicago in the 1980s, arguably the neighborhood's worst decade. 
Um, and they had this, you know, outside environment that was very difficult to deal with. And then inside the house, they had this utopia. Um, and so there are these discordant aspects of their upbringing um, that really like is in their music um, in a very authentic way. Now someone says, well, I'm not all that much into music. You know, it's not my thing, particularly that kind of music, whatever they think that is. What's in it for them? Well, there's a lot, about a lot more than music. Say, yeah, I mean, it'd be very hard because their music sort of fuses a lot of different elements and is very accessible. Accessible. I, yeah, because it's not, you know, their, their songs are not sort of like avant-garde jazz songs. They're very contained. Um, rooted in pop sensibilities. And so the first thing I would say is listen again. But then I would say that for the film, um, you know, it's, it's a family story. And it's, it's a father-son story. And it's a story about um, brotherhood. Um, you guys stick together? Yes. yes. They have a bond? I would say so. I mean, so where are they now? Uh, now um, they're in New York and Chicago. Uh, and one of them is in L.A., um, but they're still together as a band. They're making uh, money? Yeah, they're doing good. Yeah. They're, they're making a living? Yeah, they're, they're making, making a living, which is, yeah, that's do, the key. Do they have their own families, or what's the deal? Um, yes, I think now four, five of them have children of their own, um, and they're all, well, not all of them, but mostly being raised as musicians as well, or at least being taught how to play. So you're this guy a few years back who, who was in law school walking around in uh, New York City, hear them and you do this, and they say buy a CD and then the rest is quote unquote history. And by the way, the film is being seen as we do this show, you're, it's opening up in theaters, you know? Yeah, well it's played, it premiered at South by Southwest um, right. in March right. of 2013 and has been playing festivals and then it'll be in theaters um, in late February, early March of 2014. Got it. And then it'll be on PBS on Independent Lens uh, in April. We like 2014. that. 2014. Anything connected to PBS, right? Yeah. So here's my question. So you, you do that, they say buy a CD and the rest happens. Is this what you thought would happen when you stopped and listened to those guys? I definitely was drawn by something, you know, outside of my own rational thought process. <laughs> um, I don't think if I had thought about what would become of this that I would have made it, you know, uh, especially over five years. Um, I think there was a little bit of delusion that I had in thinking, you know, that I could be in law school and making this film and that I would get it done. And um, I ended up just sticking with it and sticking with it, and that was my focus more than anything. But I'm, I'm excited about where it's, what, what's happened with it, and I'm proud of the film. You should be. Question, last question before I let you out of here. People always do this when someone makes a film that's special. They say, what are you going to do next? Don't you uh, hate that? No, no, I, I'm happy. <laughs> so what are you going to do been next? I've working on this for a long time, <laughs> so I'm happy to look forward to it. Um, I'm making a film. Actually, my father wrote a, a book about uh, the community organization we had him on the show talking about it. He was on the show, it. right. right. Uh, known as Acorn. And yeah. I'm making, um, with a documentary luminary named Sam Pollard, we're making a feature-length documentary about uh, the organization. It's a fascinating organization, a lot of twists and turns, and a lot, a lot of folks misunderstand what Acorn's all about. Yeah, that's for sure. Important film. Yeah. Uh, you mind if I plug again? Sorry? Mind if I plug? Please. Uh, Ruben Atlas is the director of a very interesting film called Brothers Hypnotic. I want to thank you for joining us on One on One. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. Folks, this is One on One. We'll be back right after this. Interesting. Yeah, thanks a lot. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. Funding has been provided by Barnabas Health. Berkeley College, the law firm of Gibbons PC, United Water, Wells Fargo, Verizon Communications, and by New Jersey Natural Gas. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been made possible in part by the Adler Aphasia Center.